on tighter. You don't want it to be the first spill on the new chairs. <laughs> Just saying, there's some people watching. Just kidding. Uh, on, a, on a really cool note, uh, man, thank you for your generosity also with the giving tree. We've been doing that for a few years, but I was told that we have about 20 tags left, and we want zero tags by the end of this service, amen? So um, if you're able to, just grab a tag on your way out. Make sure, though, you write down your name and phone number, because we've had people take tags and forget to write that down, and eh, we don't know who took the tag. So... If you could do that, that would be amazing, uh, but thank you for your generosity. In case you didn't know, we're in the second week of our series on a door. Um, Pastor Mark spoke last week. He did such a great job. Let's give it up for Pastor Mark. That was amazing. And um, man, if you, in case you didn't write it down, his big idea was you become what you behold, and it was a powerful message. I encourage you to go back online and check it out, but I just want to say um, I was supposed to do the first service, I forgot, but man, thank you to my dad, Pastor Wes, for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak, but also for leading the church well and everything, so we just want to honor you and say thank you, and um, so grateful, grateful for your leadership, and uh, it's, it's just amazing. Well, today, as I was saying, we're going to be talking about adoring God and loving Him and, and really what that looks like and how to do that. And so I just want to pray for you before um, I speak that you would hear what God wants you to hear, that you would respond to what God is saying. I believe wholeheartedly that as I communicate, it's, I'm a vessel, and it's amazing how different things I say has nothing to do with what I intended to say, but God will stir it in your heart, and he'll, he'll do things with his word because it's always alive and active and moving, isn't it? God's word is alive. So if you're here today and you're like, man, I want to receive all that God has for me, would you just lift your hands? I want to pray for you. So Father, I just pray for every person right now with their hands raised. I just pray you'd fill them with your presence, fill them with your joy. I pray that they would have eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts that are just going to respond, that we would lay everything aside and just focus on you, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. So, uh, and I have an amazing heritage. I feel so blessed. My, my grandfather, Oscar, was a pastor. Uh, my dad's dad. And my dad's obvious pastor. I'm a pastor. My wife's a pastor. Uh, we just have this amazing heritage of serving the church uh, unto the Lord. And my grandpa, Oscar, um, was larger than life in so many different ways. First of all, he was a big man. He liked uh, big plates with big food. Um, and sometimes he'd go back for more. Uh, he also had a huge voice. He loved to talk loud. Uh, he was Norwegian. And he also loved to sing loud. And whenever a hymn would come on at our church, you better watch out if you were sitting directly in front of you, in front of him, because you would shake. You'd be like, oh, who was that? And when all hail King Jesus came on, man, he was all over it. And uh, he used to lead worship and uh, just a great man of God. Um, and so he, he loved the Lord and he, he adored lots of things. One of them in particular was his car. In fact, I can remember him telling me, Nathan, with a tear in his eye, I love my car. It floats on the freeway and it just kind of glides along. Now, anybody that would drive next to him knows that he just, I think the lanes were optional to him. So he just kind of cruised around, and the Sunday drive on the freeway doesn't work out, but he enjoyed it. He just loved his car, and I didn't really always understand why, but he, I'm not kidding, every time he talk about this car. Now, we all have things we adore, our children, hopefully, our spouses, turn to your, your spouse and say, I adore you, right? We, we have, a, do we have the, there's so many things that are adorable. Uh, I, I've noticed some things that have been kind of weird lately, like, um, I don't know if you've seen this at the mall, but I've seen people pushing their poodles in uh, strollers. <laughs> Anybody seen this? And then I've seen people, I saw a lady, it kind of scared me, um, there was like this thing moving in her purse and it was her little puppy. I'm like, in your purse? And, and it wasn't like a ghetto purse, it was like, I think it said like Chanel or like, Get. it was like a name brand, I'm like, 
what is going? Apparently they make these now. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I don't want to point fingers and judge. So here's our dogs. Uh, that is Zuri. Yep, yep. And then the next one, that's Kaya. Uh, they are Labradoodles. And uh, we get to enjoy um, them getting haircuts every six weeks in Jesus' name. But they are super cute. And we love our dogs. But we all have things that are adorable, right? Now, what's, what's funny about going back to my grandpa, I, I, I did not always understand why he thought his car was so adorable to him. Now, when I was about nine, ten years old, my brother and I would ride with him on the freeway and really make sure our seatbelts were tight. And um, he thought speed limits were suggestions. <laughs> and he would go super fast. Now, here's the thing. When I was nine, I thought his car was a miracle car. And here's why. Whenever he would go through the freeway, flying like California speeds in Washington, he's just flying. Cars, no joke, are pulling off to the side. They're moving over. And if they didn't, he would flash his lights and they would move over even quicker. And, you know, at 9 and 10, I didn't understand. I just thought, this is the best thing. It's like the Red Sea. It just parts for Grandpa. It's amazing. <laughs> and as I grew up and got a little older, I realized why these cars were moving. Here's a picture of his 1999 Crown Victoria. <laughs> it was a former police interceptor. <laughs> and he, with a tear in his eye, Nathan, this car just gets me places so much faster. He just loved his car. And, you know, as funny as, funny as that is, I, I just, I think a lot of times many people, when it comes to connecting with our Heavenly Father, we feel like some people are like my Grandpa Oscar that have the highways open for them and access to God. Like they get miracles. And it's hard not to have some jealousy creep up. Like they, for some reason, hear from God. And I'm over here, not in a white crown Victoria. And I don't necessarily hear from God. Or I haven't got the breakthrough I was looking for. And I want to encourage you today that if you find yourself feeling that way, that Jesus actually gave all of us an opportunity to have the highways open up for us to have access to the Heavenly Father. The problem is the word adore has been lost in our culture. You see, it's been replaced by adore. Not that we don't adore. We all know how to adore. It's just we adore the wrong things. We end up, usually the problem starts with us. We adore ourselves. We don't necessarily say it like that, but it's true. We're more concerned about what we're eating, what we're wearing, what other people are thinking about who? Us. How it reflects on us. Like when our kids act out, we don't want them to do that because it looks bad on us, right? And so this self-worship has to die. But Jesus does even more than that. The Bible teaches us that adoring God gives us supernatural access to the Father. And so the problem is we lose the meaning of it, the intention of it. And so today I want to give us a, a brief theology real quickly of how we can access the Father at any point, any time. Let me say that again. You can access the Father at any point, any time. That's why Jesus came, right? So we have that access. So we're going to talk a little bit of the theology of it. And then we're going to have a moment at the end where we are all going to adore God and encounter him. And it was beautiful the first service. And I'm praying for double portion for you second service, okay? So the, the theology of it, let's start there. First of all, we must understand the nature, the power, and the access that's granted when we adore God, okay? The nature the power and the access. So what's the nature? Well, first we have to understand the nature of the word. We get the word adore from the Latin word adorar, which is like A-D-O-R-A-R, -R, okay? E, at the very end, there's an E there. Adorare, I, I say it just the way they want you to. Um, and it's, it's, we understand it, but it, the meaning of it is simply to worship. It means to worship, okay? 
So when you adore something, you're saying, I worship that thing. I, I put that, at, at really, I esteem it. I love it, okay? Now, I was thinking about that, the nature of worshiping God. And, it, and God brought this, I, 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 I've read this verse many times growing up. I'd never seen this. In 1 Peter 2, 9, it says something powerful for those that have surrendered their life to Jesus Christ. You've gone from darkness to light. You are now a son and daughter of the king. It says an amazing thing about yours and mine identity in Christ. Here's what it says. Look at this. But you are a chosen people. Say chosen. chosen. A royal priesthood. Say, I'm a prince. Okay, let's have the fellas do that. That's better. Fellas, are we princes? Let's say, I'm a prince. prince. Ladies, you ready? Go ahead. Let's just have you say it. It sounds weird if I say it. One, two, three. Should I say that? That's okay. You guys just keep that. That's strong. Okay, I like it. I like it. But there's royalty in the kingdom. There's royalty. How dare we devalue one another? as sons and daughters of the king. A holy nation, God's special possession. So all of those things are qualifiers of your identity. They're all identities that we must attribute to who we are in Christ. They help us have a better picture of who we are. We got that so far? This is the part I missed, okay? That you may declare the praises of him. Stop right there. That is a code for worship. If you dig deeper into that passage, it's it's really simple, that you may declare the praises of him. What is it saying? That you may worship him. So God has given you all of these amazing qualities for a one primary purpose, to do what? To worship him. And why should we do that? Because he's called you out of darkness into wonderful light. You went from death to life, from bondage to freedom. From brokenness to wholeness, you are now a son and daughter of the king. That's why we worship him. That's why we adore him. So we must first understand that it is actually not just the nature of the word adore, but that's the nature of who you are. Your nature in Christ is to worship God. You move worshiping yourself to the back burner and we worship God first. He's our primary person we worship. So when we do that, unusual supernatural power is released into our lives. And what's the first power it does? The first power is the best, to be honest with you. And it's, we find it in James 4, verse 8. It says, draw near to God. And what does he do? He will draw near to you. When you adore God, he can't help it. He just comes in. He gives you a big dad hug. I don't know if you have a good dad. I have a great dad. You've seen a lot of him today. He's amazing, but he will never turn me away from a hug. In fact, he seeks it out. (laughs) Grandkids, they don't get turned down. And I bet most of you who know my dad, you get the same treatment, don't you? He's the dad of the house. Why? He gives everybody a hug. He loves every one of us. How much more does our Heavenly Father love you? How much more? He's operating from a human perspective, transformed by the Holy Spirit. My dad is, but now God is God. He loves you with an everlasting love, unconditionally. So he's given you this amazing blueprint. It's so funny. Sometimes people make it so hard. Well, I don't know if I can go to God. I got all these things. All he's saying is draw near and he'll come. Just come right to him and he'll come. Don't make it so complicated. Don't make it so hard. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. And what happens then is just like the crown victory on the freeway, the parting the Red Sea of cars, you have supernatural access to the kingdom. Supernatural access to the Father. The Bible says in Psalms 100 verse 4, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his Name. That's what adoring is all about. When I read that verse, I think of this amazing, huge fortress or wall, and it's a kingdom, but there's these 
wonderful gates that all it takes is you to say, I worship you, Jesus, and they fling wide open and everything the king wants you to have is available to you and to me if we want to run in and grab it. It's all available. It's all available. So we must understand, and I hope your grasp and taking notes, that adoring God gives you supernatural, unusual power and access to the Father. And all of this is simply because Jesus came for you and for me. That's what the Christmas story is all about. We read in Matthew 1, 18 through 25, it says this, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her fiance, was a good man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. Now, pause. I'm pretty sure most of us here could understand why Joseph would feel that way. I don't know about you, but I would need a supernatural act of God to believe this story. Any, nobody else? Would? Okay, just me. Uh, thank you. Well, all right, that's cool. More faith, all right. But God gives Joseph exactly what he needs. Look at the next verse. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid take, to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Now, this is the part I want us to focus on because it helps us truly understand why we adore our Father, why we adore Jesus. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means, what does it mean? God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary as his wife. Scripture helps us understand that the entire reason that we have access to the, our Heavenly Father is Jesus. If we look back through history in the Old Testament, we see God walking in the cool of the evening, having relationship with Adam and Eve, and then they sinned. They chose to break the covenant with God. And you read, if you read it, the Bible the, 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 with the right lens, the rest of Scripture, you know what it's trying to do? Reconcile relationship. Yep. And God loved us so much that he said, you know what? I'm gonna bring my grace and I'm gonna bring Jesus and he's gonna die for you and for me and be risen again so you'll have eternal life with our heavenly father. That is why we adore him. That's why we worship him because Christmas is telling us it's all about Jesus. And the key is, and this is my big idea if you're taking notes, adoration is not about you, but it's for you. Adoration is not about you, but it's for you. Last night, I have a confession to make. I love, some would say adore, I work on that, Panda Express. <laughs> Can I get a witness, orange chicken, anybody? Uh, that's what I'm saying, I know, I know, I know. I know, it's good. But, well, last night we were going there for dinner, and I noticed the drive through was like way lined up. So I pull in, I look in the, inside the window and I notice that there was only one person in line. So I, 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 my wife and my sons are in the car. I jump out and I look and there's like a sea of people coming. You may not think I'm fast, but I'm pretty fast when food's waiting for me. So I flew in there and I was next in line. The lady was super kind. What would you like? She had me taste some food. I ordered my favorite chow mein or chicken, teriyaki chicken, a little beef broccoli. I sampled the shrimp, true story. I did all of those things and I get through it and it was just amazing. It was quick, it was warm, it was hot. I paid for it, boom, boom. I was back in the car in five minutes and I thought, this is amazing. As wonderful as consumerism, consumerism is in Panda Express, it's broken when we treat the body of Christ that way. It's broken when we treat God that way. Here's what I mean. If the worship doesn't sound just right, 
if it's not the right song, if the pews don't fit right, if the gra- carpet isn't clean, if that pastor has better hair, if this feel is better, if it smells different, if it looks different, and we go from place to place to place, neglecting what we were made to do, worship God. We have to remember consumerism has a place, but it was never meant to be the body of Christ. What did Jesus say? You must deny yourself, take up your cross, and do what? Follow me. Everything about the kingdom of God is upside down. That's why we struggle to adore God, isn't it? That's why it's lost, because we're so busy adoring ourselves and our Panda Express, hallelujah, that we forget we've entered his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. It's about him and not about me. My worship is about Jesus, not about myself. But you know what ends up happening? When I take my eyes off me, you know what ends up happening? It's absolutely amazing. I am transformed. The longing for my soul is finally filled because I've put my eyes where they belong. I put my worship where it belongs. I put everything back into who he is and the nature of who God is. He's love. He's generous. He's kind. And when I worship him, everything changes. You see, in the Bible, there's a cool story in Acts chapter 16. It's about Paul and Silas. They're in prison. And you know why they're in prison? Because they told people about Jesus. They're in prison. And not only are they in prison, but they've been beaten. They've been flogged. So they're sitting there in a jail cell. And many people would take that time to feel bad for themselves. Panda Express was called today. They're sad, they're upset, they're they're down. But you know what Paul and Silas are doing? They're strengthening each other by singing hymns and spiritual songs to the Lord. The truth is, adoring God actually has power. If I could have Cole Cox come on up, uh, he's going to lead us in a song in just a moment. And here's why we're going to do this. But I want to read Acts 16, 25 to you. This is what happens when they start singing. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly there was a massive earthquake, and the prison was shaken to its foundations, and all the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped, so he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted, stop, don't kill yourself. We are all here. You know why that's powerful? They only did what they were designed to do. Don't miss your design. When you function in your design, in your nature as worshipers of God, the earth shakes. The addictions that you've been struggling with for so long can be broken off the same way. I believe, Mael and I were talking, I had a different passage there, and she was like, I really think you should share the Paul and Silas story because it's a symbol that prison doors are going to be open for people today. Some of us have chosen those prisons because we've been in sin. Some of us have actually done nothing, but yet through trauma, you're stuck in anxiety. You're stuck in fear, depression. Things happened to you that you didn't choose. And you're in a prison. And the the recipe for healing It's so counterintuitive. It's to worship. It's to adore. It's to put our eyes back on Jesus because it's not about me, but it is for me. It's not about me, but it is for me. This past week, I had the privilege of speaking to some some boys who uh, think they're men. They're 16. And uh, three of them, they're going through really, each of them have their own unique struggles. They're going through some stuff. And I asked them, have you ever had an encounter with Jesus, like between you and the Lord, just you, like real? And they were like, "Eh, I don't think so, like maybe. And one of them spoke up and he said, you know, I don't really even want to go to God right now because every time I go, I get turned away. I I don't feel anything. He doesn't do anything I ask him to do. Panda Express, doesn't it? 
Sounds like Panda Express. So I looked at him and I said, I want you to open your Bibles. So we opened our Bibles. We read Acts chapter 9 where Saul is killing Christians and he gets converted by Jesus showing up and blinding him and saying, why are you persecuting me? And he goes from Saul to Paul and he gets this amazing transformation. He gets healed and he goes and all these different things happen to him. But at the very end of that passage, it says something I had never seen before. It said, and Paul ate some food and his, and his strength was renewed. I hadn't really ever thought about that. And we read that verse out loud. And I said, I want you to listen to the Holy Spirit voice. What is God saying? And that, you know how teenagers like it. And one of them finally spoke up and he said, I feel like God's saying the way that he filled Paul's stomach, he actually is gonna fill my life spiritually. And as soon as he said that, the Holy Spirit hit that room and those boys jumped up and it was like God just, the Holy Spirit, I'm not even joking, I have not seen like that, just boom, hit the room with his presence. And these boys, like literally their countenances changed, they leaned forward and they all had their own encounter with Jesus. And that night they had basketball practice and their coach called me, he's like, what happened? Those three boys were so different tonight than they have been since I've ever met them. And I said, it's, it's they encountered Jesus. They encountered Jesus. I wonder if there's people here this morning that need to encounter Jesus today. Would you stand with me? I, I wonder if there's people in this room, if you're honest with me, you feel the way those boys do. You've tried to put things out there and it just feels like you're hitting a ceiling. You feel like there's no breakthrough. And today, I just believe that there's breakthrough for you today. Cole Cox is gonna lead us in a song called Fresh Fire. Yesterday, he did this for men's breakfast. I, I'm not kidding. It absolutely blew me away, not because he's talented, which he is, not because he can sing, because he is, but it was amazing because he was by himself and it was like the angels of heaven were singing with him. And the whole room was transformed. There was an atmosphere transformation. And I believe that there's an atmosphere transformation about to take place for every single person who wants it today. And the invitation is really simple, but it's not very easy. The invitation is this. Draw close to God, and He will draw close to you. And what I want to ask every person in here today if there is any of any area of your life that has, it feels like a prison door is in front of you. If you're here today and you're struggling with addiction, if you're here today and you're struggling with healing, if you're here today and there's marriages that are on the rocks, if you're here today and your kids are far from God, if you're here today and you need breakthrough, I wanna encourage you to come close to God. Now, I know God is everywhere, but there's something about getting out of your comfort zone. You know what's amazing about God? Whenever he would tell somebody to do something hard, he wouldn't say, I'll make it easy for you. You know what he'd say? I'll be with you. His promise was, I'll never leave you, I'll, forsake, I'll never forsake you. And I thought about this. If I needed a miracle, like if Tate or Titus or my wife, if they ever needed something that was so desperate, their lives were on the line, would I walk 10 feet? How many miles would I walk? And I wonder sometimes if we're so comfortable that we forget that if I step out in faith, God comes in. It's just amazing. The first service, there were people coming in and it was like their scales were coming off. There was freedom released. There was people accessing the Father. One of the greatest things I saw was someone who said, I don't feel the love of God. And all of a sudden began to weep because they encountered God's presence in ways they'd never had before. They had their own encounter, not their parents, their encounter. So my question to you is just, it's really an invitation. We're gonna open these altars up as Cole sings this song. There's gonna be breakthrough. If you need any breakthrough at all, come on down and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's not about you, but it is for you. Will you take a step of faith and receive the breakthrough? And while you're down here, the pastors and the prayer team, 
We're gonna anoint you with oil. We're gonna pray for you. So I wanna encourage you, don't wait. Go ahead and come on down, Cole. Now, here's the second thing. Here's the second thing. My, Ella, my, my wife told me, she said, I feel like the Holy Spirit is saying this next service. If you know somebody that you love that is bound in addiction, would you raise your hand as well? Because you're going to be standing in the gap for them. And that there's going to be breakthrough by your faith. Amen. So right now, we pray, God, for every hand that is raised high. We honor that faith right now. We declare chains be broken. Chains be broken. Prison doors be flung open. They're open. And I just pray right now, as people are free from addiction, that they would never go back that they would pursue you, Lord. I pray for every person in this room that you would always be the primary person we love, that our hearts would be drawn to you. And I just declare freedom. 